That's all right.
Oh my gosh! I, I'm I'm absolutely filled up from that clip. It is, it was so good. First now, of all, I loved the Tom Jones show when Ryan, I was a kid. Ryan, pin yourself up on the screen, there, buddy. Ryan, where are you? Oh, come I'm here. come okay, to you us. Go. Now, can you? Okay, I just because uh, I don't want to. That anyway, was I think freaking fantastic. I mean, love that. Yeah, he found that. Uh, where, uh, just, Seth found Seth that. Seth found that. Yeah. Good Here's why it's really good that Seth found it, because as you can see here, we also found the costume besides your little face well, there, it, but there's the costume. Oh, you know what, Seth, you have to come show this costume just because... Lift, just lift it up on the close-up there. See, if you watch Because screen, it is, this costume is so, my it, it looks there. brand no, no. new. Well, no, it's you can so, leave it there and just lift it Oh, no, 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 you can hardly see it there. You're only seeing a little part of it. I was going to have you lift it up to stand at all. And then we stand can see the whole all. thing. Stand at all, okay. It's got a close-up. It does. Just lift it. I know that's a tough concept. It is. Oh, imagine yes. that. Yes. Now how okay. do we get a shot of that? Well, you have it. Now just slowly lower it. Okay, so you can... Got to have the bell bottom. You got to put... Look at the beading on the bottom. Now, is this a Bob Mackie? Bob Mackie. Because that... I, I would buy that costume in a heartbeat. I mean, if you could ever find anything like it. I've never seen anything like well, this. Well, I like to wear this on Halloween, so I'm... It is so... It's got to be a size two. I was I'm looking planning, at it. I'm planning to wear that at some point. It weighs about 25 pounds, at least, and right? lock it there. Yeah. I was... I, we, we were handling it a little bit, and I can't believe how heavy it is. That she could dance in that is amazing. And well, it was, it's so good to see Penny... And her hair was so long, and she was she's such a great dancer. Penny Worth was a great singer, great dancer. Sherry Williams, I don't know why your monitor keeps going on and off, but that's okay. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, they're in there, and, uh, you know, Ray Chabot. There's a lot of people in that show that, um, you know, old friends. We, and it's a flashback for me in particular because, you know, when, when I was a boy um, during this time, Carrie and I were in the show. You were? Yeah, so we... You mean be, the Vegas show? Right, well, this is Tom Jones. She wouldn't have brought us for that. But yeah. in Vegas, that at, that was part, a number from Vegas. Oh, it was? So we would be standing off stage waiting, you know, to go on, and we would be listening to that medley over and over. <laughs> you know, I mean, I listened to that thing a hundred times. Uh, so it's a major flashback for me. In fact, so much so, um, what I'll do is I'll go to that close-up camera over there, I'll show you guys some pictures. <laughs> uh, Scott said, this clip is insane. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's so, it's so, Yikes. Yo, oh, there's your mic. Okay. Agreed. Am I still there? Do you what still, a, does everybody what still hear me? What an awesome clip. Ryan, you still hear me? Ryan? I can. Okay, because okay. I, I awesome. wasn't sure right. if I killed my mic there. I'd, there you go. Okay, so here's some still pictures. Here's some show and tell, uh, everyone. I got to get closer. Cat, take over just for a second, because I got to zoom All in. Right. We don't have any technicians so I, here. I will take over my my uh, disembodied voice. I am. Uh, it just makes me so happy when I can see 
Debbie, you know, I mean, to see her when she was, I don't know, how old was she there, do you think? I mean, well, someone obvious. asked in the, in the room. 1970. 1970. So, she's, 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 uh, so it was 54 30, no, years old, 54 30, years 38. ago. She was 38? In 70, she's 30. So well, she, she was, was born in 32. So, so she's 28 years old. There's 28 years old. Wait, is that right? Are you sure? Born in 32. No, 38. 38. Okay, she now great. Let's, uh, we got to punch. How did that? Oh, that's where we're good. We're okay. on the close up. Yeah. All right. So here is uh, there's some stills from that number that we just ran. And uh, you see they're on these acrylic cubes. And uh, oh, I wish we had those. I this love is them. really a cool picture. Yeah. Can you see that picture? Kat? Oh, yeah. Look how cool that costume looks. That costume is everything. I love that costume. It's very oh. mod. But during that same show, this is what was going on here. You see. So we have Carrie. Where is Carrie? So so this is what was going on here at that time. Uh, when we came out, we, I would play guitar and I would sing with Carrie and my mom. Uh, we did our own little number. There's more pictures from the same time. You see, I'm not singing though be because my voice was changing. Thank God he invented that program for men because uh, that got me out of it. It looks like I am singing, but at any rate, maybe just some harmony stuff. But uh, here's what's kind of cool about all of this. Is that 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 leads us? I'm coming back over here to switch because I have to do three jobs here. Wait, let me change hats. Okay. <laughs> All right, you back? Yeah. Bring, well, here. I mean, we've shown this. We showed this in the past. Why don't you put that here? Okay, Sorry, I'm going just put to that there. Facebook Live. Now, what we did is, so so, go over there to her costume, and show this with with uh, get in front of that costume. I'll cut to the close up. So here is, uh, stand by, there. Hi, Don. So, see that little guitar, that was the first time we did the show. And that was this guitar, uh, which my mother also played, show that picture. Uh, my mother played that guitar uh, in her Vegas act prior to Carrie not being the show. And then also it was her guitar from The Singing Nun. That guitar? And then it was handed down to me, which now go back to the black and white of me, the one with cracked egg. Right. So that's me playing that same guitar. And now let's go back over to here. We'll go to me and I'll just show you the guitar just for fun. So, so this, yeah, well, I didn't. So that's the guitar that we're playing and I guess it was yeah she did sign it inside there but uh, this was from the singing nun and then later used in the sound in, in the, uh, the sequence with uh, where she would sing in the show she did sign it here actually on the back yeah too. I see oh but that is so cool I guess I should sign it too because I played the guitar but here's the thing she wasn't sure I was going to stay with the guitar so um, she decided um when I did decide to stay with the car, can you hand me that one right there? Joe Lynn Counter wants to know if you still play guitar. I do still play guitar. I have not heard you Lately. pluck gu guitar strings okay, in here. ages. You want to know that this <laughs> reminded me of? I don't even know if I told you this. Feeling groovy. See, okay, so I don't here's have a capo where I could play the. So with Carrie, we plugged Bridge Over Trouble Water. Not in tune. Well, you didn't know you were going to play it. No. But you, he used to sing me to sleep when we first met via Skype because we didn't have Zoom yet. So we would sleep together on Skype because we didn't live in the same city. And he would sing me John Denver songs and I would fall asleep. Then he'd fall asleep. Then we'd wake up together on Skype. So we would go to sleep together and wake up together without even being in the same state. <laughs> that was great. That's a very romantic thing to do. I yeah. don't even know. What was it? I used to play. I l Sunshine. Oh, that's right. On my shoulders, look so lovely. Makes me happy. 
Either way. Sunshine in my eyes can make me cry. What was that next chord? <laughs> cry. Yeah. Anyway. Here. I love so that the guitar. guitar yeah. So oh look, it was on you the whole time, but that's okay. Okay. Because I'm like, no, no, it's fine. You missed out. You heard, but you missed. But this was my second guitar. Which show that picture here? This picture over there. You could walk closer, maybe if there's still light, but I don't think that there is. Camera five. So that's this guitar, Carrie and I. Now Carrie there was singing "Bridge Over Troubled Water." Uh, I would open for her playing "Bridge Over Troubled Water." That's right, see. When you're in feeling small. When I don't say, is it like, I don't have a capo, so you can't. I used to, if you look at my guitar there, I have the capo on the fifth fret, so it's a little high for me to play that. Anyway, we just thought you'd like to see that. Now we're ready to show that. So do you think, you don't have anything. You can use the tissue. But use the tissue paper. Are you guys liking this okay, or are we boring you to sleeves? Oh no, we all just like to be together. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's not just about that. So here's Carrie's. Oh sure, of now, course. So this this outfit actually is from. This is. Uh, I've got all. This the is show and tell. What could be wrong with that? Well, I've got the pictures. We have lots of hearts. I, I, I haven't okay, seen... Okay, well, I, I just like to ask because of I don't want Of course. Wanna, when I see snoring, I, I just want to make sure... <laughs> that it was like, so, was this at the Desert Inn show? Yeah, so here's, here's that... Look, here's the picture. Let me sneak by. Let's uh, see. Tammy Wilson. <laughs> she said, Todd Denver. <laughs> <laughs> look, so step aside just one second. Uh, so, so there is Carrie in this costume that Seth is about to show you. You can just carefully... Yeah, yeah you can just, put it close to the camera because it's hard walk, to just see. Just walk up to the camera right there. See it? There you go. So that's this. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. John um, Eric is asking if you have any footage of you and Carrie singing back then in the Not show. Not that I've seen, but it stands to reason that it must be there somewhere. It, we, it exists. Consider. We just don't know where. So that's the... Well, it could be. It's just, it's, right now we just have stills. There. What, there is a recording that we used in Bright Lights. Of, so of if Carrie. you notice right now... To, um, just hold it up. He's it's wearing fine. white I'll, gloves. Let me just turn see? this on. I'll turn on my camera right there. Okay. Yep. There you go. So Seth's wearing those white cotton gloves because the costumes have to be handled that way. Well, lest we forget, you know, this costume is now 55 years old. Yes. And so everything has to be touched with the gloves. And this is a Bob Mackie, by the way. The Bob Mackie. And the pants are in my lap. And the pants are in my lap. The pants are in my lap. There's a song in there somewhere. Let me just, Let's let see me see. Let's see if we can do that or not. Here's the pants. <laughs> yep. No, we'll do it. I don't want to touch oh, them because I don't have gloves on. Yeah. All right. Unbelievable! Look at the pants and the magic. That is so cool. Can it isn't it? God, you know, to think about yeah, what it has taken it. to keep these costumes you can all walk right into together, it. It'll, it'll focus on you. all intact. Get block cat and in we'll perfect, focus on you. See how in it perfect on you? condition. We that, there's no extra <laughs> no extra charge, folks, for the strip show of black cat. That's right. Nothing but class. <laughs> there it is. Now you can now you can show it there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Nice <laughs> shot. That's All beautiful. Right. So here, here you go. That 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 is so cool. This costume is more weighty than I it, I thought it was because I've only ever seen it on a mannequin. So that's what he worked with: silk and beads. Bob Mackey hmm. and sequins. Yes, that is beautiful. Just gorgeous. Okay. More of Debbie's children. That's what they are, right? Yes. Her ghosts. Her ghosts. That's right. Okay, so that is that is our show and tell for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. That. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a lot going on here. When you get a chance, yep. let's put this back over in the other stand. I am. Wait, I have a story I can tell. Oh actually. yay! So story I could time. I could tell a story about this guitar. So. This guitar, it's hard to see inside of it, but inside of there, uh, it's made by a guy named Ramirez. 
And what happened is when my mother decided I was going to stay in the show, and um, she said, well, we're going to buy you a guitar. And she asked somebody, what's, what's the best acoustic guitar you can buy like this, nylon string guitar? And uh, they said, well, there's a guy in Spain that makes these guitars. His name is Ramirez. So we went to Europe, not, not just for that, but in 1971, so a year after that, we yeah. went to Europe and we bought this guitar in Madrid, Spain, at Ramirez's shop. And this guitar is now a very valuable guitar. That guy has passed away long ago. Yeah. But his son still makes guitars. He's considered one of the most famous flamenco guitars that there are. So all the great flamenco players. Was that the guitar that um, Alberto Luis was... Freaked out about it, yeah. And, and he was playing flamenco on it. And he knew yeah. what it was. Yeah. And so, anyway, that is... We put that back in the stand. That's my little story goes. So uh, that's the pictures you guys have seen of my sister and my mother and I traveling in Europe together. Yep. And uh, with Harry Carl. It was kind of, I think, my mother's last attempt to put that marriage back together. But obviously that didn't work. And uh, in fact, you know, the, like the gambling was a stop or the drinking was going to stop, right? How would that work out? A trip to Europe, does that... Does that take care of drinking and gambling addictions? <laughs> not, not when you, not in Monte Carlo. <laughs> it does if you fall out of the gondola in Venice and we never see you again. Exactly. Oh my gosh, this is so, so fun. Uh, Sharon Willie just said, um, I just like hanging out with you guys. And it's like, yeah, that you met Sharon. She was my high school girlfriend and she came down to Miami, you know, when she and Andrea Well, when came you guys in. aren't here, this is what we do. So. <laughs> Almost every night we That's right. sit. No, and you know, it sounds kind of silly, but we don't do it every day, obviously. But there is, whenever we get inspired, we go digging mm -hmm. and we start, and we always find things. Like today, uh, we were looking for an item that we might auction on the last minute. So it was kind of hard to do because I, I, you know, there's a point where you can get saturated in any one thing or another. So I was trying to find something interesting. We found a few interesting items. Uh, one of the items actually has to do with, uh, your conversations you were having yesterday. About? The four agreements. Oh, yeah. How did you know I was having that, com that, that conversation yesterday? I felt it. Did I, you watch our show last I night? I snuck it in late. I watched the reruns. Uh, after Leave it to Beaver, I always you get right into You snuck that. into the room last night from the house, didn't you? I heard... No, you come in, as you know, and screen these things. So I'm going to read you... We're going to do something kind of interesting. We're going to analyze my mother as it relates to the four agreements. Okay. That is interesting. In her words. Okay. Now, this piece of paper we found just a little while ago in the closet. It's written in her hand. I see. It's her and it was her getting. She was trying to write something for a speech. So, these are notes. So, they're not, you know, prose. But, mm -hmm. but they are in some ways. Many surprises in life. My life has had many surprises, many challenges, many changes, changes I didn't like. Divorce, two failed marriages, stepchildren, his, mine, yours. Challenges, life is truly a challenge. I was never and have never been a failure because I have never been afraid, only challenged. So she, she, uh, wow, <laughs> that is a cool thing to find. Right. So, so you, you, yeah. Let me just look at it real no, quick. No, I want you to, to yeah. focus on the last All right. phrase. I have never been afraid, only challenged. Ooh, it's, I it's, love that. Yeah. And, it, and it's almost biblical because I am, a, I, I'm not afraid because thou art with me. You know, I don't walk alone. I yes. mean, she truly believed all of oh, that. Yeah. He used to say all of that. And I, and there it is in her words and her way of saying it without being biblical, uh, but very powerful that she, that, that, uh, you know, the expression, what, uh, what doesn't, uh, what doesn't kill you, you know, if makes it, you it, stronger, what, makes yeah. you stronger. And I, I think she lived through a few of those events. Well, you know, your mom was so interesting that way because I never saw your mom cry. She was very strong. I never saw her, her cry over herself or anything that, you know, because she was hurting or, you know, she was a sentimental crier. Gee, who else is like that? You don't cry at 
life. You cry when we watch, you know, you get tears in your eyes when we watch a movie, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, well, movies are much more upsetting but than But being life. stoic was v is very much w what your mom was and well, what you actually, are. Well, actually, no, it's more than, it started long ago. It's a Reynolds thing. Well, be that as it's it may, genetic it's, thing. it just goes to show you, though, that we get passed down. We come into the earth, we know nothing, you know, and we get... We're, we learn programmed. and we get programmed, or as Don Miguel Ruiz would call it, what does he call it? It's another word he uses. Oh. Um, um, uh, domesticated. Domesticated. In his book, he calls it being domesticated. Now, you know, I, yeah. I, I, there's an interesting, the thing that is interesting about Don Miguel is I don't feel, I think some of his words should be interchangeable because it's his second language, and I almost feel like what was interesting about you and him together the other day was you would say, program. you had other words, mm -hmm. but what he means by domesticated is he, he means programmed by your parents, programmed by your teachers, programmed by your politicians, you know, programmed to fit into the box. The reason he chose the word domesticated, because I did ask him about that, he, he said he chose that word because it was less harsh than you know, it was less harsh than programmed. Because programmed is a, it's a weird word and you kind of hear it a lot and programming is, is what it is exactly. But, well, how but many people... Because the, anything we learn is programmed. How many of you would be offended by the word programming in some way? See, I see it as very accurate way to show what your parents are doing to you at a very young age. And I don't mean bad, I mean No, they don't bad. even know they're doing but, it, but neither do... Well, I think you, know, you do, though, because... But teachers and par parents and... Stop doing that. Doctor... What? You see? What? Well, I, I, you know, that's... Your parents jump on you. Stop doing that. Stop picking your nose. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For me, it was tie your shoes. Whatever. You know, there's, there's this stuff. You're trying... You are programmed. You're tr and you repetitively... But, but even now, we get programmed. Of course. Even as adults, we get programmed, well, which is, you know, why people, when they say things to us, whether they're, I always say your words have the power to, to heal or they have the power to take people down. And so which way are you going to use it? Because your words, just your very words in an everyday conversation are in fact programming anyone that's listening to you to an extent. So, I mean, um, whether you consciously know that you've taken it in or not, your subconscious takes it in and it's on the hard drive. So that, that's why we call it programming in the hypnosis world well, because that's really, what it what is. What are they really trying to do though? I mean, they're trying to prepare you for life. No, it's not, like I said, mean? it's- Parents aren't trying to prepare? They, they are, but the things that get programmed into us are moral values. Um, and that's intended to... Pr spiritual to pr values. These are things you need to use in your life. Right, right. These are the things that are life tools, you know, that, that these are the things that are life tools. But then when people get mad, they bark things, you know, it, are, you know, what did Carrie used to say? And don't use the word, just use the first letter if you're going to go there. Our parents don't mean to fill in the blank us up, your but, parents but they you, do. <laughs> that's right. Is, it's the poem. Your yeah. parents F you up. They don't mean to, but they do. Like so many generations, they hand down misery generation to generation. And, you know, I mean, in a way, though, what you're really talking about here is, you know, people that have different flaws and um, they, they may even unconsciously hand that down. Now, that's what that poem is about. Uh, healthy people like my mother, um, other than her choice of husbands, which she and Carrie stayed on that track. The, look at that. Right. Uh, b uh, but, you know, she, she had so many powerful traits that, that were good that, you know, you're really, you'd be blessed to have someone hand that down to you. You'd be blessed to watch a parent live life the way I got to watch my mother live life. The way she lived her life, you know, was, was truly a great example for anybody. I used to watch her never be late for work. Mm-hmm. I never, I never ever heard her break her word. Oh, four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. So my mother yeah. was impeccable with her word. Um, you know, she had, I never saw her break her word to anybody. She would go down in flames rather than to break her word to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, now, she was all, she gave me a lesson uh, that was a really amazing lesson that was the first agreement. Which is? Don't take anything personal. When I was a little boy, we were in Canada, and I was old enough 
to read, and there was a review that got written about my mother's show, even before the one you just saw. And this reviewer just slammed it, and her. And I was incensed. I was all upset. Well, that's your mom. No, but I'm going to explain what happened. Okay. So I'm all upset going around, and, and, and she says, and she, in effect, the long and the short of it is she says, we don't take these things personal. There's a lot of people in the world, they all have opinions, but you cannot take these things personal. I know that when I'm doing my show, I'm doing my best, and I'm, I am working hard, and I'm, and I'm performing at every level at my best. I'm singing it best I can. I am dancing as best I can. I'm giving it all to the audience. And if somebody doesn't like it, it doesn't matter because I did my best. Agreement number four. Always so, do your best. So gee whiz. Yeah, so, so now she's so far batting two out of four there. Okay, well, I, so I want to go back to the, uh, I want to go back to the letter. No, three out of four. Actually. I mean, just the back end of the letter. So she says... Life is truly a challenge. I was never, nor have I ever been a failure because I have never been afraid, only challenged. And now if you couple that with the life lessons that I just told you, you know, the challenges she was always willing to just do her best to overcome. And that was good enough. She never, was never afraid because she knew she was doing her best. And, the, and, then you, and she knew she wasn't alone, which is not necessarily a four agreement, but it's, it's the higher power concept. Mm-hmm. So if you put those things together, you're going to say what she just said. You're not afraid. Yeah, life's a challenge. But I was not afraid. Because as we know and talk about a lot, fear is the basis of every neurosis. You know, it is, you want me this way? Well, look, look in your monitor. What, what are you look seeing? Look in your monitor. I see. And we'll just get yourself in the middle of that screen. Oh, okay. Is that better? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't mind, but I mean, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Um, so whenever you're feeling out of sorts, whenever you're feeling unbalanced, this whenever you're feeling... This the beginning of a song, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and you... lonely, da-da-da-da-da, then say it, my chin... It's Annie, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. The Annie, sun will yes. come out tomorrow. <laughs> that all you ever have to do is ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Right? Right. What am I afraid of? And then really, like, take a minute to answer it yourself because that, that's what's so interesting. And, and you might want to even write it down. What am I afraid of? Why am I feeling like this right now? What am I afraid of? And you go, afraid of anything. Think harder because if you start to write those things down, then you can address them and you can break them. And that's what's so great about, you know, your mom saying, I'm never afraid. I just challenged. And life is full of challenges, isn't it? Almost weekly, you know, you have to face some kind of challenge. But it's so great to be free like that. There's almost, and we can all be that. I mean, that's what's almost, great. Almost everything that you get into is a challenge. I mean, even if, if you cook, you know, there's a challenge to make that thing the best you can make that thing. You mean instead of the chicken that you were blowing bubbles with last night? Because I didn't blow any bubbles. I just chewed you said on it a it long was time. <laughs> it was cool. It's kind of like chicken jerky. I think that's the last time I'm ever going to eat chicken again as long as was I live. Was it chicken jerky? No. I, I got it at Whole Foods. I, it was supposed to be a, some fantastic chicken, and I thought, you know, this, this just Did turned me right like off of it. chicken? I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't see how Seth and I ate today at at a vegetarian at a vegan restaurant, not vegetarian, a full vegan restaurant, uh, and um, the chicken that we ate there was better than what we had last night. And today wasn't real chicken, and it tasted well, really good. All I know is, I was watching a movie in the other room. You and Seth were in the kitchen. Yeah. And I was chewing this chicken, and <laughs> after a little while. <laughs> <laughs> into the movie, I was still chewing the chicken, and I decided to go into the kitchen and s- see what you guys were doing. I got into the kitchen, and you said something about how was the chicken, and I said, I don't know, I'm still chewing it yeah. now. And I thought it was me, because I was in the kitchen. And my jaws were starting to ache, because I was chewing for so long, and then I went, you know, I don't like this. In fact, I think it just cured me of ever wanting to eat chicken again, which, of course, my little flock outside will be thrilled to hear, because they don't know that Mama ate chicken. But, I, you know, I just, but... Um, well, I, uh, my point, though, was I was using as a my cooking, but whatever you do, sports, like I just played golf today. It's very yeah. challenging. 
Uh, many, many of the greatest athletes in the world will tell you that golf is one of the most difficult sports that there is. Um, and many, very few people can, you know, get into the lower scores. And it's a very challenging game on so many levels, but lots of fun and get out in nature. But life is just full of things that we choose to do voluntarily. You know, even a hike would challenge you to get from point A to point B, maybe to extend how far you can go, how far can I walk? You know, um, there's just an endless list. It's just an endless list of challenges. Yep. You know, I just want to bring up that Liz Cochran is one of us, of course. She's, you know, in the hospital. Uh, I told everybody on last night's show about it, and Seth and I went to see Liz today at the hospital, and um, that she, poor thing, you know, she's just laying in bed. I hate seeing any of my friends, not well, you know, so she's going to be in there again tonight. I don't know when she's going to come be getting out, but uh, so we, if Liz, if you're watching, we, she's probably sleeping, but if you're watching, you're very loved, and, and we're thinking about you, and, and it was great to see you today, and even, even in there, it was you know, great. You know, that's what's also cool about the show, is yes. you've got a lot of people now watching, you know, and everybody can just agree yeah. that she's going to get better. You know, that, that positive energy that all we, of us, all of us can agree yes. that she's going to get better. And you, we send that energy, just take a second and just send and that energy. And if we could all just say, I agree, that would be great. Say, exactly. I agree that Liz is going to get better because that but is that, exactly that energy, right. And it's the same thing with, um, with, with Frank, you know, and that's a longer struggle, obviously, with Frank. And, you know, but I think we've all sent, you know, as much energy as we can mm -hmm. to Frank because, you know, these are, you know, you talk about challenges. Yes. Right? I mean, these, those are, you know, health challenges are the w biggest in life. I mean, money is one thing, but life's just a bubble of cherries. Don't be so serious. Life's too mysterious. But health is the one challenge that is truly the one that is the most difficult. Yeah, which is why you've got to start taking care of yourself early because you don't want to, as you get older, it just gets harder. So you want to have a, a, a good, healthy, older life. So Did that's you, it. Um, oh, and can we bring Ryan on for a second? Because Ryan and Patty Hughes, who's in the room right now, Ryan. Wait, wait, I just want to say one thing for oh, you okay. to end that thought. All right. Steve Jobs, pretty successful guy in his book, you know, he, at the, when he ended up getting very ill at the end and died early, yeah. you know, he said he regretted not living his life more consciously health-wise uh, earlier on in his life. So the sooner you're thinking about that, the better, meaning why am I smoking still? Why am I drinking this much, et cetera? You know, I mean, there's a lot of choices in that. And I could tell he didn't get into any great detail, but it, it was clear that it was a, his biggest regret yeah. in life. And here's a guy that had all the money in the world and, and all the success in the world and great accolades and everything you could possibly want, but he's leaving the planet early, possibly because of choices he made at a, at a younger time in his life where he uh, did not take care of himself. Right. Back to Ryan. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, Ryan, and make, pin, pin yourself. I want to hear. So, Patty Hughes, who's in the I room Todd, today. I think Todd controls me now. Yeah, there we yeah, go. There he goes. We, Todd controls all of us, Ryan. Oh, you want me to pin? I'll <laughs> pin. Okay. I got to pin. Can I do? I, know I, can, he's on I think there I now. can pin you at the top. I think he's on there now. <laughs> yeah, there. No, but I'm anyway, not. Ryan and Patty Hughes were both at the same event today. And so I want to hear a, a few minutes about this. This uh, the, so Chiller is a big convention that that you and we were at last year. I was signing autographs there last year. Uh, not was it October or something no, it was like that? Just this? October. It was October, right? And then no. they they have it twice a year. So the April, the one, which is the one you went to today. I want to hear you saw so Patty. I saw pictures of Patty with uh, William Shatner, who looks really good for yes. his age. For any age, he looks <laughs> yeah. fantastic. He does. Yeah. He looks fantastic. And she, I, they, yeah. she's had pictures of Dylan McDermott with her. So show us what you got today. Well, uh, it, first of all, it was uh, thousands of people were there. I really? Mean, it, I, it's as full as I've ever seen it, and I've gone quite a few times. But um, they did a pretty good job of organizing things. Anyway, I, did, I do have a few of my... My, uh, Let's get some show and tell, Ryan. Drum roll, show and please. Tell. Here's my William Shatner. Oh, no. It, uh, yeah, that's my William Shatner. Oh, oh he signed it. Uh, I, I was trying to figure out what you did. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. 
Blue Origin, yes. I wanted something, I, I never really watched Star Trek so much, so to me, I mean, he's known for Star Trek, I wanted it there, but I liked more what he did when he went to space. Well, so people like my age watch Star Trek big time. Yeah, I used to sit. I the, watched it. I used definitely. to sit in the Greenway House big bed with Harry Carl and watch Star Trek religiously. Okay, what do we have here, Jenna Lee Harrison? That is Jenna Lee Harrison. Yes, Three's Company. Is this from today? That was from today. What does she yes. look like now? She's um, she's uh, be nice. Be a few nice. Birthdays. <laughs> be nice <laughs> yeah she's so she looks good yeah she looks good she looks good there you go That's i think the way she's young i think she's nice young she's there, younger Ryan. than i am actually yeah well that wouldn't be um, that. That i'm not sure of that is yeah Rosanna oh Burnett. look at that wow really nice. someday you'll get that signed by madonna i just feel it well i do listen it's if we can make that happen, that would be incredible. Well, you know, and I. And this is if, my Griffin done. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah. And now, okay, so that's a screen grab from Bright Lights, right? That is. That took me a hot minute to do because I tried to do it through HBO Max, of course, uh, but they won't let you screen grab anything. So, so how did I, you I get it? Actually, I actually took that on my phone and did some uh, little magic with editing. And it turned out and printed it at Walmart. Oh my it, gosh! It turned out pretty darn good. Look at that. He, he yeah, and, and he was fantastic. He what, was really great. So cool. tell us about that. Well, you, you mentioned he, um, you, you mentioned that you were a buddy of ours or mine or whatever. Oh yeah, I of course brought you up. Yes, you know he. They loved the picture. That of course was the end right away. They all the handler and he both just had never seen anything like that. And he said that they were just talking about the documentary the other day. I don't know why they didn't mention that, but I said um, that Todd, you know, of course I was a good friend of Todd's and, you know, he actually wanted me to call and so you could talk. But, I mean, the place was, he had, it took me 45 minutes to get up to him. I, yeah. mean, I was in line for minutes. So I said, you know, and there was no cell reception at all. I couldn't, every text message I tried to send uh, to anyone was just coming back. Uh, couldn't send so there was no way to get a hold of anyone and uh, he said he understood and I said oh Todd I hadn't talked to you in a long time and he said oh, I know I know and let me so, see yeah so he was really friendly and he loved the picture he wished I had another one and I didn't but yeah. oh Here, you let, know what should we that... try to call him no you don't want to call him He's just worked all day at Schiller. Oh, he was at that show all yeah, day? Yeah, he's exhausted. He was. Yeah. Oh, and his he, line, you, I mean, I couldn't believe how many people were. I'm, isn't, that because he doesn't do autograph shows very often. And he, so that's. That's what people were saying yeah, in the line. So that's why the, the lines would be long. And Patty Hughes said um, she loved. Right yeah, yeah, I call. know you, but don't call him. Don't he's call exhausted. Him, she says. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, you someone, can send him a text. Someone's saying... Um, hey, that's a good idea. You can send him a text. There you go. I got permission uh, for that. Who, who was it saying... Um, uh, someone was asking, did, did they let you take a... a ask, did, did they, they let you take an auto, ask for an autograph and you can also have a selfie. But though they ch yes, so the answer to that is yes, right? That they charge different from each thing. It's not they like... Do. Is they there do. one like price fits example, all? Yeah, go ahead. Well, here's the, here's this one's gonna floor you. So William Shatner was a hundred and thirty dollars for the autograph, which was fine. I expected that. You just to, for him to sign it, right? Just for just him to for him to sign okay. it. Okay. And then another one hundred and thirty dollars for the photo selfie. And if you wanted the deal, it was two hundred and fifty dollars. So that's a like that that gets your attention right there. I and think I would have done it. They only take yeah. cash. I know. So, you know, people don't come with. I mean, you kind of come with what you come with, and that's why when you went and you didn't just take cash and you took, you know, other forms. Right. I, I just don't know why more people don't do that because, I mean. Well, you know, for me, I. I, I know why. I don't carry a lot of cash, I mean, and typically, so I'm, I don't expect a lot of other people do either. But, um, I, you know, no. I, Even I th the vendors. You know, I went and for the first time I like explored some of the vendors and there were a lot of things, some act, old Star Wars things that were there and 
man, I could have done some real damage, but they wanted cash. And it's like, I don't have, I'm not bringing. That's stupid. You know, that kind of money. Yeah. And I did not realize stuff. that so many people wanted cash, even vendors. I didn't know that. Well, now, 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 yeah. now Griffin came to the memorial, right? I seem to recall he him did. being at the memorial. Because I just yeah. found a text when you told me to text me. Yeah. It said, Todd, it's Griffin. I sent an email saying, I'm coming to the memorial. Hope that's okay. I uh, hope I have the right address. Look forward to seeing you, G. Yeah. So then I responded, look forward to seeing you. And that's the last time he and I have spoken. Uh, maybe. And, and you know what? Because that was post Bright Lights. So, because we had talked during when we got him to do Bright Lights, but that's the last time I talked. So that's a long time ago. Well, it, it's going to be eight years, that, right? This year is eight, the eighth year. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. This is the se- 2016. No. They died. 2016. 78. And then we're 24. 24. It'll be eight years this December, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's just so hard to believe. And how fast time goes. I mean, it just seems like maybe a few, two years ago to me or less, you know. But yeah, so that you haven't seen him in that long. It's just time whizzes by, which is why we need to be more in touch. I need, I'm saying this for me because I need to be better at that. And, um, and, And do things with people. That's, you know... Just getting out of the house today with Seth was just like, oh my gosh, look, we're outside. I mean, it was for me. I don't go out that much. Um, so I, I do want to get together with friends more. It, it, I like it when people come here to visit because, uh, you know, there's so much to do here and people always enjoy the animals and things like that. Ryan's coming in July. Ryan's coming. I'm so excited. Yes, I am. We're going to have a slot machine adventure. (laughs) At, huh? The panda panda slot machine. I like the panda machine. I like Wheel of Fortune. I like. I know you do. Well, you you like. Walking Dead. You like the Game of Thrones. I haven't seen a Walking Dead machine in a while, but Ryan turned me on to penny machines. Because he would sit down at a penny machine and win $300 in a few minutes. And so he turned me on to penny machines because I never played them. I didn't think they did those kind of payouts. Well, it's not really a penny that you bet, of course. No, but, but yeah, still, it's one it's $1 <laughs> against $8, sure. you know. So oh, I, yeah, sure. anyway, you have good luck on those. But so when he comes I out, I, I actually go out. I go, I do things, you know, so it'll be fun. But... Um, so I'm just really excited you got to go to Chiller today. I was green with envy because there were so many people there I would have loved to have um, seen. You know, like that would have been yes. great. I love going to those shows and being a part of those shows because I get to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in years and used to know, you know, in the 80s and 90s. And so it's, it's really fun. But autograph shows to me, I, I get why people go and why they love going. I really get it. They're just super fun. We're all fans, aren't we? I mean, we are all fans of someone or something. Well, so. I think that's the point. We all have a, the person yeah. that we think highly of. Or, or just, you know, to meet somebody that you admire. And it, it's such a cool moment, unless it's not. <laughs> unless they're not. I, I've got a few Unless of they're not, you Let know. Let down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let down, that is so true. But I just really love meeting people that... I I've had that happen yeah. a lot in my life. Where I would, oh, I can imagine I think, you have. Oh, this is really cool. I'm going to meet this great star. This is going to be awesome. And then they were just jerks, and you're like, see, now for me, my the way I judge people like that was maybe harsher than others, because I put I always put it up against my mother. So like, if a star is acting like a star or arrogant about being a big star, and uh, I would always compare that to my mom, who was never like that. And so that always bothered me when, when people were, like, blowing fans off. Like, go away, kid, you bother me. You know, that was, that was the, the typical response of a lot of celebrities. And, um, you know, my mother always felt that uh, if you're going to be a celebrity, it was responsibility to be connected to your fans, friendly to your fans, available to your fans, or make them feel like you care. And, and that's a gift. Uh, Kat's got that. You know, certain people, uh, when they meet you, there's a moment, there's a connection that, that occurs there, and you could walk away 
thinking, oh, wow, man, I really connected with that star. And, they, and frequently, that's how people would feel about my mom. That's how they are when they meet you. Uh, it's a gift to be able to uh, deliver that feeling to your fans. And um, I think it's important if you're in that line of work you know, that you do that. So well, how many people you just that were, have to thriller were doing that? <laughs> well, you just, you have to really love people uh, and because people can tell. I mean, you know, people can tell that if you're sincere or if you are not, or, you know, if you, when you're up, when you love people, they feel it. And it's, the you know, love is so tangible. And, and so I love when I meet, you know, somebody I admire and they, and they're, kind or that you they 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 see you for that moment that you're there they actually see you and uh i i've been in an autograph line when i was you know a young teenager i went to, i i'm not going to say who it was but the show he was on was the brady bunch <laughs> and i was about 12 years old and he was signing autographs at a at a, a department store in my hometown and oh, I just took my bike and I went right down there and I was so excited because, you know, I was lived in Fort Lauderdale, which was a very small town back then. There was nothing there. And so that was a big deal, you know, and that the show was on the air at the time. And I went, rode my bike down there and I waited in line and I got to the front and they gave me the picture and he signed it and he never even looked up. Mm -hmm. Never even looked up. And I was 12 years old and I just thought, Oh, no. You know, I wanted to be seen. I mean, I think everybody does, right? So but it's that's the, and you learned that lesson. Well, okay. I did. I've learned that lesson, but sadly, that's, that's over and over. That's what I was saying about that connection that you were able to do with people. My mom did it. Yeah. Uh, that's why I never wanted to be an actor, went into show business, because I would never want to have to do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? You're so nice. All my friends that meet Todd, even the guys, they, they, they have bromances with Todd. It's fun to watch. Todd's got kind of a guy's guy. And so when my guy friends meet Todd, they, they, they're like, I just really like Todd so much. And we I'm can like, talk about throwing some oak on the barbecue, and <laughs> cooking up some steaks and baked potatoes. But it's true. I go mean, they go into an instant shooting. bromance with you. It, and it's hilarious. You know, it's, it's silly, but it's wonderful. I've seen... Very I famous think it's people, you I know, think it like might be because romance they were getting with you. bored on the cruise ship, and <laughs> I was the second most interesting thing to the ocean. I wasn't even thinking about the cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my! Well, uh, how cool! And you saw Patty Hughes there. Yeah, Patty and I got to spend a little bit of time together. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's super awesome. I mean, I, I I really wish I could have been there this year to to even participate, not even sign autographs. I would have gone just to see it all. But I'm not big on it waiting in those long lines. I mean, Shatner's line must have been ridiculous. It was you around the block, right? Uh, it was it was around the block. I was fortunately there early. I think I was like when I counted, I was like number sixty in line. But they were efficient. Now I didn't get to talk to him. I mean, it was not. I mean, you didn't get time with him unless you got a picture with him, uh, which I I don't do that. Yeah. But it was pretty much. I mean, they had handlers, and your item went to the next person, to the next person, and the next person. I was ten feet away from him at the table. It went to him. He signed it. It came back to me. I made brief eye contact with him. I think I muttered like, thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you for being here. Something like that. And that was it. it I mean, it was, it was quick. But it kept everything moving. And for me, I don't need to get into weird conversations and awkward, like, uh, what do you say? <laughs> so for me, I was happy. What would you say to William should we, Shatner? Should we call William Shatner? You have his number? <laughs> Don't call him. He's 90 him and he worked all day. Oh, yeah, it's late. I'm yeah, what don't time ever is. call oh, anybody late. at the end of an autograph show day because they are like this, crosses in their eyes and flayed out. I mean, this is, that's, yeah. it's, it, you're Here, exhausted I'll, I'll, I'll at the, the end of those. Number. That's right. There, you I did it. I was exhausted standing in line. I can't imagine some of those, you know, some of those people. I mean, well, Chris it's, Dunn, I mean, yeah. you wouldn't think that he'd have the line he had, and he had one of the longest, consistently long lines that there was, and I don't know how someone keeps that stamina. You know, you know why I have William Shatner's phone number? Why do you have his phone number? I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have it because I don't know what made me do it. Because I, I you now Carrie knew him, but I didn't really know him very well. I'd met him a couple of times, but when Carrie passed away and we started talking about the star, yeah. Walk of Fame star, he jumped right on board and made you know called over there with me and wanted well, to know right. if I wanted any help. And he also was the one that arranged to get Debbie and Carrie's ashes sent into outer space. Mm. Oh my gosh! So, so he's been very helpful in, in many ways, and clearly, you know, was connected to Carrie in, in these in an odd way, you know. Well, you know, he he is he's a national treasure. I for mean, sure. I think you oh, know for he, sure. he he really no is. Doubt. No question. And I I do. If you ever see him s the, sing the Happy Birthday, have you ever seen that on the Hallmark? It's you awesome. know, have you seen it, Ryan? I have not. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. I mean, he's just, he's a national treasure. I mean, no There's doubt about it. Yeah. In no, fact, he's the last remaining, is he the only living Star Trek no, star? No, no, Takaki. Ta oh, George Takai, that's another right. another one there, too. There was another yeah. guy there, um, I can't think of his name, but there was another no, I mean, Star yeah. Trek. There's star not, obviously, the main character. He's the biggest. George Takai looks pretty good. I, I sat next to him at an autograph. So yeah, I mean, he's a very yeah. nice guy. But and I was I thinking he looked good. that, you know, Shatner is, is he approachable. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you said, he looked at you, no matter what was going on there. You know, he gets it, you know, and he has gotten it. And that's why his career has gone on for seven decades, as my mom would say. Yes. And his interviews when he went up into space... I watched a few of the interviews that he was doing, you know, on all the, the stations. And I mean, his sense of humor, you know, even like before he went up and joking about what would happen if, uh, you know, it was kind of like the Hindenburg and, and what, I mean, he, he really had a wry sense of humor. And I, that's when I was kind of like, you are pretty cool. Like, yeah. I'd but like I mean, to... this is what we were saying earlier that stars, you know, can have that je ne sais quoi. They're just fun and you, and they're approachable and you feel that they're cool, like you just said, he's cool. Now you just know he's cool, but that's, uh, you just told me what you felt. I felt he was cool. I feel that same way, and I, you know, and even before I even met him, you know, I always felt that about him. Um, but you just never know. I mean, like I said, there's there's a lot of letdowns. Yeah, don't be disappointed. You know, when you, <laughs> you know, you're gonna meet you're gonna meet a star, and you're gonna be like, wow, you know, because they, you know, they're not all with those ethics. I call them mm -hmm. sort of like ethics of celebrities should have these ethics. My mother should have caught, taught a course, you know, on how to be a star. Florence Viveros wants to know who is the worst star you have ever met, Todd? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. It's terrible to blow people out of the water, you know, like, but, but, you know, we have a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, thank you, Allison. I appreciate what you said. You know, that I, really I think nice. that's a really good question. Give me a minute while you're doing something else, and I'll I'll have to give some thoughts up because nothing is jumping out at me. Like, oh my gosh, I just remember. You know, I I have to think for a second. So you're, I'll think about it. Okay, and while you're, Frank, you are correct. You win the prize. <laughs> it's, it's like everyone's guessing who I was talking about from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> That's so funny. Do you know what's really funny? I wanted to bring that up. Okay. So my father went along uh, this time, and he actually got my Susan Olson. Susan Olson was there, so I had a, a photo of her that needed to be signed. Your in. dad went with school. you today? He did. Oh, my well, gosh. the story is Frank, Frank couldn't go, so Frank had two extra tickets, and he asked, you know, he was trying to see if anyone needed them. And I, I said, well, I, I could take him, and my dad could come along. Oh, so he, my he gosh. Went. So anyway, he uh, took care of getting my Susan Olsen signed while I was, you know, trying to talk to Griffin Dunn. And when he was finished, the story was, he said, my word, she was so chatty. And, uh, you know, well, what did she say? And he went on this whole thing about how she, or she was saying something about, she was trying to get one of the guys, I forget which one, maybe it was your person, but uh, she said, I was, I'm, I'm trying to get, one of them doesn't text back, and I've been saying, like, you should come to these autograph shows. And he says, no way, not going, not doing it. And she said, you know, I don't know why he won't come to these things or do this kind of thing. So it's kind of funny. Maybe, maybe it's the same person. I don't know who. who I don't know. Is. Well, I will tell you that Christopher Knight is, I did a soap opera with Christopher Knight in 1979, it, Another World. It was a, Another World, and Chris... Knight, who played Peter Brady, he came on to our show, and we were all like, Peter Brady's coming on. 
on the show. I mean, you know, it was really ridiculous and silly and wonderful. And so he um, he came on the show, and he was he was really fun and and uh, funny. And so it was not Peter. Excuse me, it wasn't. I don't know who. I don't yeah. remember who it was. I'm just saying know. that. Don't think it was Christopher Knight because he. I like Chris a lot, and he went into producing and all kinds of things after that. He he really kind of stopped acting, and I think he was also on a reality show of some sort because I, I, I think so. But uh, uh, you're right. Yeah, really nice. So uh, yeah. Okay, I have an answer for you. Okay, well, the answer is. Well, I can do a few different things here, but the the. Okay, well, this, I want to respond to okay. whoever asked a question about... About who... Right, so I don't... Fr fr was, as, uh, as you all know about me, I am not a very negative person. I don't really judge people very harshly, you know. So if a person gets my attention like that, it, it's got to be pretty extreme. And so when you asked me, there was only one person I could think of that, that, was, that had extreme behavior like that. Now, I could think of other people, for example, when I met Cher. Yeah. Um, don't get me started. No, no, I mean, I, everybody has their thing about Cher, but I don't have anything super negative to say. I just had a, it was just a bizarre take. I didn't, I had met her a few times casually, but I went to her house one time to her birthday party, and she was sitting in the Shay's lounge, and, and, and a friend of mine who was dating her at the time was literally like feeding her grapes like the Roman times. And I remember just sort of standing over looking like, Wow, this is so decadent. This is bizarre. And uh, so that's one cut. But that, again, I don't have nothing negative to say about it because she was awesome. She, when Carrie and I had our little home movies that we were making, she would be in them. So I don't have anything negative to say about her. But there was obviously some zoftic behavior there. Now, the person I'm thinking of that fits the criteria of the question is a person that did a movie with my mother. And she kills my mother in the movie. <laughs> Shelly Winters. Now, by the time I meet Shelly Winters, uh, she, I, this, I was still a teenager, and we were, were my mother was producing this movie because she really couldn't find any movies that she particularly liked, uh, or whatever scripts were being submitted to her. The studio had been dissolved, so she decides to produce a movie called "What's the Matter with Helen." Uh, gets this script, and for whatever reason, she needs a crazy sister, older sister. And she decides to, cap I mean, there's a million people my mother could have called. I mean, literally. I mean, you, she could have got Greer Garson. You know, I mean, anybody. And she chooses the crazy Shelley Winters. I mean, <laughs> and, and Shelley went, and now, when I first met Shelley Winters, she came over to the house to discuss the movie. She seemed very nice. But soon thereafter, they were starting to rehearse the movie, and she was getting into the role. And in the movie, if you watch her, you know, she unwinds, and she's sort of this... Um, She's a, sort of a religious zealot in the movie and gets fanatical, but she becomes a crazy person and starts killing things, including my mother at some point. And sh she's a method actor. So you can see where this is going. She started getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Because and she's a method actor. Because she's a method actor. Yeah. And, and what happened that caused me to not like her, because up to, like more than like three quarters of the way into the movie, I don't really have any feelings particularly one way or the other. But once she gets to the crazy part of the movie, because they were shooting it somewhat in sequence, um, she actually caused my mother to have a nervous breakdown one day. Oh, no. That would be hard to do. Your mom was so strong. Oh, but Shelly Winters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a... This, this, is a, is a person that gets into it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I don't know if you really understand. For those of you that don't understand, a method actor is somebody who becomes the part. So, uh, so like Ronald Coleman becomes Othello and actually ends up killing the wife. Uh, and, and, you know, this is kind of what happened. She became the crazy person, drove my mother crazy. They literally had to take my mother in an ambulance off the set. I'm not sure if she even wrote from about this. From stress? From stress. Drove her completely crazy. Now, as the son, who's a te light teenager, is watching this, I was like, I wanted to do something about this crazy batshit woman. I didn't give a hell of, I didn't care about any of her history at that point. I mean, um, 
Place in the Sun, be, be damned. I mean, you know, like she made some great movies and all, but, but this is whacked out when you're going to take my mother out with your crazy ass behavior. And it was my first big, my mother had produced movies, but not, she was a producer in name. In what's the matter, Helen? She was a producer in fact. She was yeah. actually acting like a producer as before when Goodbye Charlie, some of these movies you'll see their, her production companies involved. But that's just what's called a producer in name. I get a credit because I brought something to the table. But, but in this case, she's actually putting the whole deal together, an active producer. And so everything's on your shoulders. Now, you know, you, you see people like Clint Eastwood and, and Robert Redford, and they, they produce, they direct, they act. And, you know, you think, wow, no big deal. We're all used to it. But that is a really hard thing to do, I'm telling you right now. So my mother, you know, after this was like, F that. You didn't see her produce another movie. She's like, this is too much. Uh, and, but I don't, I think she did a great job other than the fact that she had a batshit co-star uh, by the name of Shelley Winters. So the answer to your question is, I don't really like Shelley Winters very much because she messed with my mother in a bad now, way. No, someone is asking, they said they thought that... Um that your mom and Shelly Winters were friends. Oh, they were friends. Yeah. But you see what I'm talking but about. But when a method actor g gets into the role, they lose themselves. I mean, they, they become Right, that they part, live day that, to day that role. That role for the duration of they the They take movie. it home, they bring it to the set. Oh, I would They go, go to the bathroom as the character, they come out of the bathroom as the character, they're having coffee and tea with the crew as the character, and, and they get crazy. Now, what I'm... They were good friends, uh, you know, like, like, that's not why she hired her for the movie or anything. And they'd be, you know, my mother was so forgiving of a person. You oh, know, yeah. You know, she didn't, but I, as the son, <laughs> resented the, the idea that you were going to torture my mother to that extent. Very few people had reduced my mother to that state. Seth, you know what? It's after seven. Should we get a nugget at least? Okay, and bring him in here and we'll fi fi finish out the show. I just worry about, oh, what was the question? Oh, well, Asking if so, was rude when you met her. okay, so his, his, what, uh, he, what Seth is bringing up is when I met Mama Cass. Now, I, now by the way, she was so cool, that nothing negative about this, but the, um, this was the night that she died. I, I was at Mick Jagger's birthday party. We were in uh, London at Mick Jagger's birthday party, and uh, Carrie and I had gone to the party, and uh, needless to say, it was, you know, pretty wild party. I mean, uh, there were there was an upstairs room that had a, a table that, in, like a buffet. And, and you know, for those of us who've been to buffet, you know, over here you have the deviled eggs and the cold cuts and the sandwiches or whatever and the caviar if it's fancy. In this case, it was all drugs. Ooh. And, and with, we a, had, with a spoon? Well, literally. Like, we had never, <laughs> like a, no one had yikes. ever seen that many drugs before. At least we had never seen that many drugs. And I had Richard Landers, I think, with me at the time, and Carrie had her friend with her. Anyway, Carrie was performing at the Palladium with her mom. I had chosen to make a documentary about this and not be in the show. Plus, I wanted to go backpacking around Europe. So anyway, we got invited to this party. We go to the party, you know, wandering around the party. I mean, we're hanging out with Keith Richards and Mick Jagger and Bianca Jagger and all of these people. And uh, I went down into the garden area uh, there was a, this is, reminds me a little bit like of New York. We have brownstones, you know, there's like these yards behind these houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is in London. And um, I went down in the backyard and there she was sitting in by herself in the backyard. And uh, I walked over to her and I said the dumbest thing that anybody in the world could say, which was, you know, I love Here's my your music. And she goes, oh, thank you so much. And, um, Something like maybe she even said, well, what's your, what song did you like? And I said, oh, I just love that song, Oh, Lord, Won't You Buy Me a Mercedes Benz? And she goes, well, that, you know, that's Janis Joplin. I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> but she was cool about it. Obviously, oh, you could have been. Oh, God, that would be so embarrassing. I have made mistakes like that before. I'll tell you oh, another one. Oh, I'm sure we you all have. You want to hear another one? <laughs> oh, sure, go ahead. Oh, but none of them on this scale. These are mega mistakes. <laughs> okay. I, that was so bad, I put it in my book. This one's pretty bad, too. We're working on this movie in Israel, which was an Agatha Christie film, like going down the Nile or whatever. The name of it, it was, uh, whatever the name of it was. Anyway, <coughs> uh, 
uh, Lauren Bacall is, is one of the stars in this movie with Carrie. And uh, so we're all, the first day, we're all sitting in this restaurant, beautiful restaurant, and we're, everybody's introducing to everybody, and I'm sitting next to Lauren Bacall. And she's super charming and very nice. And I was like having small talk with her, and she's talking... You know, we were talking about my mother, and it was just nice chat. And somewhere along the line, I don't know why, I said, I loved you in Casablanca. Oh. She informed me that that was Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Key Largo. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, shit. I mean, I got to... So, and, and what was great about it, though, this is give her credit, she reached across to me and she took me, she goes, I get that all the time. Because she I wanted said, you to be okay. Yeah and, yeah, and it was like, and I said to her, yeah, but I don't know better. <laughs> you know, I mean, give me a fucking oop, break. Oh, my god. Oh, no, it was super embarrassing. All right, we, and we don't have any five-second delay. It, 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 look, it, that mistake is at the F-bomb level. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to give you, I'll, I'll so whatever you, you guys that. do in life, just know that as much as you think I know, I made the two biggest mistakes you could make on earth, both Quick with Mama cut Cass, to the chicken, cut to the chicken. Cut to the chicken. And because that, what, what I want to, I want to ask, away. yeah, because look how big Nugget looks in my arms right now. He's sound asleep, sound asleep. Is he the cutest thing you ever saw? All right, the reason I, I wanted to have you cut to the chicken is because I have a question. I chicken. find it, now that was, so Mama Cass died that night? That night, she died. And you also were, one, this is really crazy, because you were also one of the last people to see John Belushi alive. I was, indeed. Yeah. So, tell you us that story. Tell us that story. Yeah. Okay has nothing to do with the chicken in her lap. No, but I got to ask my question. It was Johnny Rivers' bachelor party. Yeah. Getting married to Christy. Yep. He decides that he wants to go to On the Rocks, which is a private club above the Roxy on Sunset Boulevard. So that's fine. We, in those days, everybody would, we used to, all of us used to go there. I, my truck used to record stuff at the Roxy all the time. We all had friends there. So we arrive at, at On the Rocks, and sitting at the bar is John Belushi, which at the time was a good friend of mine, and Carrie's particularly. Uh, I was friends with him because Carrie at that moment was engaged to Dan Aykroyd. Oh, I didn't realize they were actually engaged. Carrie had his mother's wedding ring on. Oh my gosh, yes. So I go over to the table, and he is uh, pretty high, pretty high, kind of speeding is I guess what you might say. And uh, he starts going on about, you know, how he was just so... This is right when Carrie and Danny had broke up because of Paul Simon. He's going on about how disappointed he is about this whole thing. Or, you know, he really wanted them to be together and how close everybody was. And we all had been hanging out a lot. I used to go up to the Chateau Marmont. And, uh, you know, we all, he lived up the street from my house on Coldwater, right up the street. And we would go to parties up there. Anyway, long story short... I'm going, to cut, I'm going to cut out the part about the drugs and things, but suffice it to say that he, he was struggling that night, but he wasn't like in danger of dying or anything. And uh, we, we closed the joint, all of us. I mean, we all... You were sitting at a bar talking. Yeah. Yeah. But we all... At we, the bar there. Right. There's a, a bar, and then it looks down into the club. Mm -hmm. But And we stayed like for hours, and it got to be really late, uh, and we closed the place. And so he and I were like one of the last people out and we were down in the there's to the to the west of the club. There's a, where they bring the valet parking up, and so uh, my car happened to come first. I had a little CJ5 Jeep that I used to drive. The convertible summertime top is off, and I can remember like really clear because uh, we're talking, waiting. My car comes up. I jump in the car, and I remember waving goodbye. And I looked in my as I drove away. I looked in my rearview mirror. And he was waving, and you know how, like in a movie, and it, he got smaller and smaller and smaller. And then my eyes just went to the road, and I continued west on sunset. And uh, next morning, like six hours later, I was over at the Hiding Place Church getting set up for church. This is Sunday morning. That was a Saturday night. And somebody said, wow, did you hear about John Bellucci dying? I was, I mean, the chills hit me. It's only been a few hours ago. 
I, I said, not possible. I just saw the guy. You know, you were with him? Yeah, but I mean, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, he's di- they just found him at the Chateau Marmont. He died of a drug overdose. And um, I'm leaving out all the details of the drug conversations that were going on. Uh, but needless to say, he was sort of in search of. And it led to him getting with that lady who, who gave him the, the, the bad drugs. Right. Uh, but what, wasn't your conversation that night on a very spiritual level? It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, him, you know, it, it's such a shame because he was at probably seeking something, you know, and that through that conversation with you, you know, had he not died that night, he might have actually, you just don't know, you know, well, I, and I, you found, know, found I, his way. So, you know, that was the days when we had, Henry and I had started the Hiding Place Church. There were a lot of celebrities going to the church. Mm-hmm. The conversation, though, you know, was a little bit about that, including your little butt. I went to that church. Right, that's how we first I would met. see you across the church, and I would say, why can't I meet a man like that? <laughs> It only took 40 years of waiting. Not only did I meet a man like that, it was worth waiting for. And as Ken Schreiner, my friend from General Hospital says, if you wait around long enough, everyone becomes available. <laughs> <laughs> if you could live that long. He's been saying that for decades, and he's right. You know, It's like so crazy, but so it's so you, true. So you plotted this whole thing from that uh, moment. Yes, I just had to wait my 40 years, that's but all. But yeah, I did, so I did have conversations with him that I'd, I've never written about or discussed, but they were, I've, I'm willing to, to say so, so much as to say that, you know, the, the God conversation came up. I was pretty well known. Uh, Carrie used to uh, introduce me like this. Oh, hello. Um, nice to see you. Have you met my born again brother? <laughs> so I, 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 know. I, I was her B-A-B, born again brother. Uh, she, and she found that term you know, uh, delightful. I mean, she used to love to, to deploy it. And, uh, and then people, many people in those days, because it was kind of an early deployment of that term, they would say, well, what did exactly, what does that mean exactly, you know? And uh, it, would, it would open up some interesting conversations. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's some very true. very interesting conversation. Because I would, you know, it would cause me to talk about uh, my personal epiphany. In, yeah. and, and how I had been raised, you know, to, to in the church and in the temple and how it was all bullshit to me. And I, and I had no connection to God. And, I, and, and, you know, I found it outside of the church. My connection to God yeah. was found outside of religion. And, uh, you know, he just fell on me. And I used to love to tell these people these stories. And, I do, you know, I purposely would tell it a little far out like that, too. And I always loved to, to talk about how... You know, I didn't relate, you know, to the stained glass window church and all of that, because that that would help people sort of say, oh, wow, you mean that's that's what it, it's not all about that. And I'm like, hardly. Yep. I said, do you ever hear any stories about Jesus, you know, building buildings and having giant cathedrals? And I mean, that's fine, whatever. But I mean, it's like, no, the guy didn't build any buildings. He didn't have any cathedrals. There were no organs, <laughs> you know, I mean, no, he had his sermons on the mount. Right, but he, yeah. he used available technology. Yes, exactly. You know, and yes. available buildings. We don't have a building, fine, we'll do it here. This looks good. How much room we got? You know, I mean, anyway, I'm, I'm not judging those people. No, uh, well, because I guess I, no, look, I am judging having them. a building is important for churches because a lo- that's where people um, go to fellowship. No, I'm not judging yeah. that because we obviously had to use the building, but I. When Henry and I started the church, we decided that you would rent we places. We would use other buildings. Yeah, instead of building there something. There were plenty of I other buildings. Instead of saying, hey, let's take this money. And, and so people were giving money to the church. Right. We were with the, a lot of money at, one, at a certain point. I was started, a tither. Right, but it started getting bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, what do we... This is when somebody says, oh, let's have a building fund. Or, and instead, what I was like always doing is, no, let's give it all away. I mean, that was the cool thing about what was happening. We were getting all this money, and the church got bigger and bigger. There was more and more money. That money, it was you, fun. You, I think you used that money for the tent city. Everything. Yeah, to, and, but in the downtown area, because the homeless situation. Can you imagine? It was nothing compared to now. Oh, and it, it was, was pretty intense. Oh, it was bad. But I'm just saying, imagine... Just because we were in the thick of it, because we used to go down there well, and sit the choir, and I, I was in the choir, and we would go down and sing 
you know, in the street, in, in a street ministry. And I remember thinking, ooh, this is bad. And then now it's a million times worse. It's well, hard to imagine. To be honest with you, it was just as bad then. It's just that the government in those days would put everybody there. So they would, like Beverly Hills had, had a program. I, I don't know if they still do this, but they just rounded them all up and, and would bust them down into a certain area in downtown. They dumped them all down there. We also had some mental institutions for people that were way out there uh, or drug rehabs. There were facilities somewhat compared to today where there are no facilities. They yeah. closed all those facilities, but they were still dumping hundreds of people a day mm -hmm. down in downtown area. And there were people who were defecating on the streets, no different than today. And they, were, and they had very little shelter and all of that. And so we decided that we were going to tackle that. And boy, what a battle. That turned into a real war. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sympathetic to all of that when I see it. But I have to say that here we are, you know, 40 years later, and the situation is worse, and it should be resolved. It could have been resolved. The Union Pacific Railroad gave us a piece of property down there to use that they weren't using because that section of the railroad had shut down. And we had the most beautiful tent city set up with showers, porta potties, organized cooking and security teams, people coming in and doing makeup with the girls, drug rehab counselors coming in and mental health, you know, the Thalian clinic. I mean, everything, I knew everybody. And, and when I would run into trouble, man, we had in the church so many strong people and, um, uh, one time I got into a big conflict over something down over this tent city. And right when that was going on, my mother was at a party with the governor. And I called my mother and I was like, hey, I'm having trouble down here with these guys threatening to shut us down. You're with the governor. Help me out here. She literally went over to the governor, got him involved. I mean, this problem, just that next day, everybody, the guy that was giving me a hard time, I still remember his name. His name was Leon Lancaster. Leon got shipped off to Pacoima after this and uh, because the governor got involved and, and he had bulldozed part of our tent city. And, wow. And yeah, it was really outrageous. And I, was, and I was down there doing what you see a lot of people do today, comparing that behavior to the Nazis, in my mind. You know, I was like, and like, why are we down here harassing these people? We were given the land. We're not bothering anybody. Otherwise, we'd be on the streets defecating in the gutters. Anyway, the point of this is to say that this problem, of course, they've let continue for 40 years. They've done nothing to fix it. We had some really cool ideas back then on how to fix it. None of it was ever funded. They don't ever want to spend money on it. You know, these people will always be with us, always. You realize in, the, in, in ancient writings, <laughs> you always have the homeless, right? Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. Read back in the oldest text you can find. They will always be with you. So it's a question of how do you deal with it and uh, how do you fix it? And, you, you know, as a society, we should be able to handle this as one of the richest nations in the world. But the way they do it is insane. Like in L.A., did you catch that on the news the other day? A million dollars per person to house the homeless mm -hmm. people? Yeah, I did. It's madness. So, I mean, not that I don't want them taken care of, but that's insane. They want us taxpayers to put up a million dollars a head because they want to waste so much money. That's insane. Any charity that behaved like that would be put out of business in two seconds. If the, if the Salvation Army behaved like this, no one would give them a penny. So what does that tell you? We sh the government should not be involved in that crap. In the old days, man, the charities used to handle this stuff. Here's a really important thing, and I don't know if you know this, but you should write your legislature. In the day, we used to be able to give a dollar to a charity and deduct a dollar from your taxes. So for every dollar you donated, you could take a dollar off your taxes. It's not like that today. It's a percentage of that. The government has slowly taken away that benefit. There was a reason for that. It was a righteous thing to do. I could give money to the Red Cross, to the Salvation Army, to my local charities that are handling different things, to the cancer wards, to the Thalian Clinic, whatever. And, and you had, it just lowered how much income you have because you gave away a piece of your income. It's a righteous thing to do. But they've made that an impossible calculation right now. You get like 25%. I mean, it's a madness. So, and, and why? Because they want to handle it. Like in Washington, they never fixed anything, right? The two words you never want to, the words you never want to hear in life is, hi, we're from the government, we're here to help. You know, that was Reagan who said that. And it's like the most frightening words you never want to hear. 
Uh, we're from the government. We want to help. Ah, run away. You know, I mean, and, and so you, you take a situation like we have right now, the government shouldn't be involved. Local governments, real people like us, should be the ones looking at our local problems and handling these things. And the money that we give, instead of money to the taxes, duh, I, if I'm, instead of giving my money to the government, I could take a percent of that and give it to a charity that I care about. Yeah. How does that not make sense? Well, they changed those rules long ago. So we all need to bitch about this and get that rule changed because government cannot run these things. They can't run anything. Let's look at these clowns where they run things. We are on my Facebook page, <laughs> and I do not want to be put in Facebook I jail. I, 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 will st I will stand and deliver, and I agree with everything you're saying, and I applaud you for saying <laughs> it. But do not get me put in Facebook jail over that. All right, hey, Liz. Lizard, you be bouncing back? Yay! Liz, it's so good to see you here. I saw, I saw her name right here. Um, Give me my soapbox back. Yeah, get... She took my soapbox. The soapbox is down she, there. They're running out of the room. Hey, come back here! I have a... a look at my chicken. He's, he's doing a face plant. He's out. Uh, let's give stuff away. It's getting late, and i got to go put baby away. Uh, it's chicken put away time. Yeah, so let's give stuff away. Randomizer Ryan, are you ready? He's uh, ready. ready. He's ready. Uh, did you? You've are up. Oh, click to spin. Okay, so let's do. And can, Beck, can you? I'll move these and you stay with us. Oh, do you want me to? Sit? I do. You're on camera. You can stay. Oh, You're, you, it shows. Oh you don't have a mic, yeah, but just well, just put it down <laughs> and no one will see it. Okay, there. That's much better. Okay, so um, number one. Number one is. I love that noise. Oh, that's the wheel. The oh, wheel know. of fortune. The wheel of fortune. Oh. It, it has stopped on. Here it comes. Belinda oh. Fawn, F-A-U-G-H-N. Belinda Fawn, you have won from Cat Cosmetics. Thank you. I, that is my company. And, uh, and uh, Cat Cosmetics has donated the Miracle Working Cream to Gel Moisturizer. Belinda, you're going to be in love. This is so good. So what you need to do, Belinda... Here, is, you want me to show it? I, yes. I can walk up on Belinda, the what you need to uh, oh. do is go to my messages. Go to uh -oh. my Facebook Messenger. It's not, it's not focusing. It's okay. And uh, say, I, I won the face cream and give me an address to send it to on Messenger. And it is yours. That is number one. I'm All leaving. right. Number I'm going to go somewhere where I can continue my speech. Well, someone just said <laughs> Clearly. President. You know Clearly what? there is I, no I, free speech available no, here. No, I love it. Believe me, I agree but with it. But here it comes. Yeah, but here. But no, there was. Facebook. Judith, Judith IDK. IDK. Number two. She won a $25. Judith, you won a $25 gift certificate to catcosmetics.com. Go ahead and send me a message. And... We will, we, and we will email you that uh, link so that you can use that $25 at catcosmetics.com. if you take, when she shows that product, if you take it and put it up there, yeah, just without moving, it'll allow me to do a close-up. Okay, my chicken is See if shifting. That, and then put it there. Julie Hedges! Block my face. Julie Hedges. Yeah, not doing Uh-oh, I woke up the chicken. Nah, it's All focused right. on me. Julie Hedges, you, you woke have up won, the bird. You have won the muscle, uh, the miracle working muscle. Put it, put it with nugget. Rub. It is, as you know, the best stuff ever. If you have aches and pains, Try nothing like it. Try putting some of that on nugget. Yeah, you can use no. it on, your, on you, on your chicken. On you the cannot meat. use it on your chicken. You like. Or your parrot or cat. Because she, she has a calico cat, too. Why can't you put it on he's, the chicken? Uh, he's getting a little restless, so I'm going to put no, him down. No, he's happy. No, he, it means he might have to go to the bathroom because he doesn't usually. You're just going to let him wander around? Defecation. Yes, okay. Mistress. Next. <laughs> Who's next? Next. $25 gift certificate to catcosmetics.com. The rand I love this wheel, Ryan. Nugget. Awesome. It is awesome. Oh, uh, she was saying that she had one. Bar Battlemente. You know what's weird? I, I, I was, is this what you're talking about, Ryan? About 10 minutes ago I, or 15 minutes ago, I saw her write that she... That, that she hoped that she would win tonight or, or she hasn't yeah. won in a long time yeah. in yeah. months yeah. so barb congratulations do you see 
what what you did you conjured you what do you what what oh that universe. camera well when you see that shot you know oh, it's okay. that camera congratulations barb what did barb win uh, she won oh, $25. that. $25 gift certificate to catcosmetics.com. So we will email that to you, Barb. Go ahead and, um, yes, you can go ahead and uh, send me a message with your email, and boom, we will send that out to you. All right. Next, we are giving away, uh, well, I should say Todd is giving away. Todd has donated his book, My Girls. Uh, and I know a lot of people, a lot of you have it, but let's see who we got here. Cynthia Gonzalez. Cynthia Gonzalez. I think she has, it I think she has yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so um, Cynthia. No, I no, swap to a movie. Just make a swap right Cynthia, now. Cynthia, you can, you can, you can let us no, know no, no, whether you no, want no, no, this no. Okay. or do you no, no, want... No, 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 no. What? It has to be decided right now. You she don't want to confuse her. I, can't, I don't have a way to Oops. communicate with her right Take now. Take away the book. Gone. I'm she I'm might keeping, want the book. I'm keeping the book. Do you see how this? She's how this is? She's getting the movie. She doesn't have that. I guarantee you. Give her that. Cynthia, we're sending you from Todd a DVD Man of Dick. Hit the Deck from. It's one of Debbie's it's movies. It's a Blu-ray. It's a Blu-ray. So. And it's really cute. It's one of my favorites. There's a silly, right. a lot of silly okay. stuff in this movie, but the best <laughs> number in there. Is the why oh why oh where for number oh, with yeah, Ann, Miller, Ann Miller, the girler, and, and June, and yes. they sing yeah, yeah. Jane Powell and Ann Miller. Okay, and my what's mother next? Sing a song that's very anti men, but anti it's cute. Why don't we do the book next then? Let's the book. Okay, okay, well let's just see. Let's see who see. wins. All right. It's either the book or a DVD. Florence Viveros. Florence Viveros, you have won Todd's book, My Girls, and Florence is the one that asked you, I think, about, oh, I think she's the one that asked about wh the, your least favorite celebrity. I think oh, she is. I'm not sure. So, yeah. Florence, congratulations. You get my book and <laughs> Shelley right. Winter's biography. <laughs> That's right. Look just at my kidding. chicken down there, I just sitting on the carpet. Right. Okay. Uh, so, number, what are we up to? Seven? We'll just go here. Okay, number seven. And we would like to thank Time Warner. Oh, don't let him fall off of there or oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, all right. I've never seen this oh. one. You see? I Do you see? Now, I if he him. goes off the edge of that stage, you're going off no, after him. No, he's going to take a shit on that, my carpet. No, I'll, that, I'd rather that than him. Okay. <laughs> Say One For Me is going to Peggy Delgadillo. It is a Blu-ray. No, that's a DVD. Oh, it's a DVD, and it's going to Peggy Delgadillo. And Peggy, we've been really saying a lot of prayers for your baby. Um, oh, your, right. Yeah. They, she has a little Dwight dog, a little puppy, and the puppy's going to need heart surgery. So wow. Yeah. And I love that she's hanging in with that because that a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that. Well, so number by the eight, way, the, DVDs the are, final. Oh, look, are, he's playing the guitar. Uh-huh. Oh, I wish we could get that on camera. We can. Okay, okay. Oh, no, he just walked away from it. Do not let him fall off that stage, Todd Fisher. Up, <laughs> uh, oh, Joan Ahrens. Joan Ahrens. Ahrens. A, A, her, A, no, it's A H R E N S. Oh, Ahrens. Ahrens. We'll Forgive us. Joan, you have won how sweet it is. You have won how sweet it is. Thank you to Time Warner who donates uh, these great films to us to give to you. And, and so if you ever buy older movies, please go there and support them because they are so good to our show. Two more? We have a lot of prizes tonight. Sorry, Ryan. I know J Ryan's probably it's past his bedtime. Oh, no, it's not a school oh, night. I know. I it's love it. It's not a it's not a school night. It's fun. It sure is not. I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see here. It is Tracel and George. You have one. Oh, the singing nun. I love this movie. Oh, well, you can see that guitar. The guitar that uh, Todd showed okay, earlier. Okay, wait. I'll right, tell you what. What are now you going to do? I have this working, so I'm going to quickly switch over to it. Okay. And we can show it, and we can show the guitar both. Okay. So we'll go to Apple TV, which should be All right. nice. See, and here's like the movie. Yes. Good, good, great. And then over here is the, her guitar from the same movie. In fact, we have a 
picture of her, but not. We have Congratulations, Tracel. And everyone who's winning tonight, please make sure you go to my Facebook Messenger and let me know what you've won and where we should send it. Mm -hmm. um, we have one more. The grand finale. Debbie Reynolds' last book, Make Them Laugh. And this has got lots of great stories in it. She, About Jelly yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terry Johns, yeah. Terry Johns, you have won "Make 'Em Laugh" by Debbie Reynolds and and uh, Dory Hannaway, and um, this is a kind of a. a, a Debbie had had a, a stroke when this book came out, but nobody knew. Right. This is when she was here, so. A lot of people don't know about this book because she wasn't well enough to go out and promote it. That means she just couldn't. So this book came out and it wasn't promoted at all because she couldn't get out of bed, let alone leave the house. And nobody knew that. So um, you, so this book is a, is a little treasure. And I am really happy, Terry, that you won this. And so make sure you send me a message here and say you won the book and give me an address. And there it is. Make them laugh. Right? There you go. And that concludes our gift giving tonight. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming. We're going to take you out. Uh, we, we'll play the video again if we can. But uh, we all want to say good night. How many people would like to see me do another 10 minutes on politics and taxes? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <Who's> sponsoring? <laughs> That's right. Anyway, um, I'll go first just to say, can, to say good night, and then we'll go to Seth, then we'll go to Todd and let him take it out. Okay, you, you, you can talk well, in here. What, what Wait one we, second. Yeah, Wait you, one you second. You can talk into your microphone yeah. and say, they're so, going to go out with this. Yeah, but I just, but I want first, uh, I just want to yeah, say good. Yeah, do that again. I want to say good night to everybody. So if you would just no, here. give me the, um, there you go. And then we'll go to Seth and then we'll come to Todd. What you doing? Oh, we're going to the dress. After, after you okay. say, say whatever you have to say. Say whatever I have Pointed to say. At the dress. You, you know can't what? tell, but what you see is what we see. Oh, right now? Well, no, I'll, not I'll yet. Show you. Let me just show you. Getting so you there. Know. Walk in closer oh, now. It, now in. you get to see the dress in its glory. Well, we're going to do more about well, it's that a after you say your good nights. Mm -hmm. I your, love say that. Say your thing, and then we're going to go to the dress. All right, the, I'll say my thing. Um, I just want to say I love you and when have a great rest of the weekend. I love them all the time, right? And Ryan, I love you and I miss you. I will see you all. Well, not really soon, but soon enough. July. And, uh, I'll see you on Saturday. It's May the 4th. May the 4th. Okay, now we got to get ready we now for that. We have to do a show on May the 4th be with you, definitely. And yes. uh, everybody have a great rest of the weekend and be gentle with yourselves and love yourselves and believe in yourselves and just know that somewhere some, somebody loves you like crazy. So I will pass that off to Todd. Write your congressman <laughs> about the <laughs> homeless situation. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> We're going to talk briefly. We opened with this cool costume from my mother's uh, show, a Vegas act, which was then used also on the Tom Jones special, which is we opened with that film clip. We'll close with that clip, but we're going to show close up using my iPhone the, um, the dress. So walk in on it. Yeah, but you know what, Seth? Turn the camera around and say goodnight sure. to everybody. Oh, that's too close. That's TMZ close. Oh, okay. All right. Go in. Go and go super close now on the dress, and then pan down. Look at this costume. Is this, and you're about to see the costume because we're gonna play the, the clip again. This is a Bob Mackie, my favorite. I think it is my favorite, just beautiful. And we've got a lot of Bob Mackies, and that is my favorite. Okay, Ryan, you're on. Okay, Ryan, you wanna say something to our folks? He wants to hit play, I think. Good night, everyone. I'm going to hit play now. Have uh, a good night and sleep well. Okay, sweet.
Yes, ooh, gotta make it last the whole show. Take it easy. Oh. 